Uh, okay, all right, fantastic. Um, yeah, so um, I will talk about the cohomology of the quote scheme of the quote scheme, um, which I called last time um, QDGRN. So let's, so this was the space parametrizing quotients of CN of um, rank N minus R in degree D. So then the kernel has rank R in degree minus D, okay? And this is on P1 and I'll, point out today when, you know, when this P1 assumption is or is not necessary. So we'll, as, yeah, so in any case, what we discussed, we, we talked a bit about this space, um, it compactifies. So this compactifies the space of maps of degree D from P1 to the Grassmannian in case, this is when R is less than N. Okay, so when R is less than N, the generic, um, quotient here um, is actually locally free, okay? So it's a vector bundle. Obviously when R is equal to N, then we're, we're parametrizing torsion, just torsion quotients. Um, so, um, so it depends, right. So we'll, I'll comment on this as we, as we, as we, as we go on. So we, um, so we know that, so there is a universal sequence Um, on the quote scheme okay um, and so we, we've we've established various things that this is a smooth projective variety in this case over p1 it's a smooth projective variety there's this universal sequence and we saw via our diagonal arguments that we talked about um, I guess last last time that in fact the churn classes of the universal bundle generate the cohomology multiplicatively so we're gonna if we write um, well, Maybe I'll take the dual here. This is the universal subsheaf. So the churn classes um, live in the product space. So if we use a QNET decomposition, fix a basis for the cohomology of P1, a point and the, and the fundamental class, then we can decompose this. And so this is, if you want, a point on P1, okay? And so then um, what we, we know from, um, from our previous discussion is that uh, that the class is AI and FI, and this is generate the cohomology. Okay, let's say over Q. Um, so, yeah, we also, so this is one, one thing that we, um, um, uh, that we understand. And, and, uh, last time I had, uh, I had, um, uh, I had, I had written the Poincaré polynomial. So let me actually, um, write it again. So here, um, if we, so, so also, I've seen the Poincaré polynomial. So if we, so this is here we sum over the Poincaré polynomials of over degrees, basically. Uh, so this is, um, okay. And then we saw that this is a beautiful expression. given by the following formula. 
So here we have the, this is the Poincaré polynomial of the Grassmannian itself. I'm not gonna write it. And then you have a product of two um, types of series. So these are, Okay, so this i goes from one to r, okay? Um, and so, so this, this was calculated by, um, I guess by Linda Chen about 20 years ago. Um, and the calculation involves localizing the code scheme. Yeah, so, um, and, and just, um, it's using using the cell decom cellular decomposition that that uh, that gives uh, that, that 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 this localization yields. So, um, you, in fact, you can do it with isolated fixed points in this case, and um, so it's yeah. So it's a calculation one can do. I should say that Linda actually calculated for every variety of flags. So the so-called gener the the so-called hyperpose schemes parameterizing um, not just uh, not just the subsheaf of the Grassmannian, but an you know a flag of a certain type. Yeah, it could. Be, the most interesting examples are the full flag or the Grassmannian, kind of the more one for representation theory maybe, and the other for geometry more. But in any case, there's a, there's a formula for any for any type of flag. Um, okay, so what we what we saw. Uh, is that so? We're, so we're going to focus a little bit on explaining this Poincaré polynomial today. Um, so what one thing that we noticed last time was that um, what we have seen is that um, the cohomology stabilizes. Yeah. So we're interested in this. So in other words, we saw that the Betty numbers start to stabilize for D greater than or equal to K, okay? Um, and so also then, uh, this was a, basically you read it off from the formula essentially. Uh, we went over this last time, and we we also um, I also explained, or rather, well, let me maybe mention briefly at the, the end of the lecture what it stabilizes to. Yeah, how do you calculate it? Uh, okay, and in fact, we have that the stable homology. So this is the stable value. You put them in a series. Um, is in fact given, and one can check this easily by multiplying the Poincaré series by one minus t and evaluate it at one. There's a simple pole at one. And so then this is just um, of, the, of the series. So this is in fact um, given by, let me write this. So is this, Prefactor the, the Poincaré polynomial of the Grassmannian itself, and then it's just this expression. Okay, All right. And so we commented where we exactly left off. So it's been a few weeks, I guess, but where we actually um, stopped last time was in commenting that um, this is actually the polynomial algebra. So, um, so we, right, so let me just, um, so we, we specialize, so it's, and in fact, I will do this today and I'll, I'll, I'll explain why and um, what the general difficulties are, but we, we saw very quickly, so what's very, very easy to observe is that in the kind of extreme case when R is equal to N, so when R is equal to N, so in this case, um, so this is this QD, is this QDG 
um, RR if you want. Um, so this just parameterizes subsheaves of rank R of, of, uh, of uh, CR and then the, the quotient is, is just purely torsion. Yeah, so this is a zero dimensional sheaf. Um, so it's a rank, it's a, um, so it's a rank zero sheaf on, it's, a, it's just a, a torsion sheaf on, uh, uh, on, on the curve, yeah. Um, so in this case, uh, in fact, uh, we commented that this polynomial is the, so the stable polynomial is actually the um, is the Poincaré polynomial of just the the, the um, Uh, of, of just of the polynomial algebra in the Atia bot generators in these A and F classes. Okay. And so moreover, also the Poincaré polynomial has a very nice form in this case, this, this prefactor disappears. So the this, this guy disappears, so there's just um, one, and in fact, the full Poincaré polynomial. So this is the, um, um, so we, there's the stable, there, there's the stable polynomial and the full polynomial is, uh, just a second. P of Z, I'm sorry, Z and T is equal to this. Um, okay. So I will, you know, for the rest of the lecture, uh, I will I will actually focus on on understanding the cohomology of this particular space. So this uh, this quote scheme of um, torsion quotients of C of CR. Okay. Uh, it's just a, it's 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 a, it's very accessible. So we can we can say you know a number of things about it, and I also comment on the general case as well. How you know what the difficulties might be. Um, so where the analogies kind of break down. Um, okay, so I should also say that, you know, in, so this is obviously, so the Poincaré, these are the Poincaré polynomials, but I should say for this punctual, so, sorry. Okay, so for, um, so from now on, so assume, so we're gonna assume from now on, Assume we have always this r r is equal to n, okay. So this is this is and q d will always mean this now, yeah. So q d q d denotes just the scheme of quotient uh, uh, of quotients of um, of length d of uh, of of uh, of c n, okay. Um, so well. Okay, so let's, uh, so I should say that, yeah, okay, so there's a, there's the Poincaré polynomial here, of course, and um, in fact, uh, you know, one can, one can, one can generalize this and there are recently, there are calculations of the, of the motive of this quote scheme, yeah, so, so, so sort of kind of along the same line, so the motive, so in this case, the motive of uh, QD is 
calculated. Okay, so um, so these are uh, recent papers of uh, my recall fee, Banyarol, Fanteki, Peroni. So that sort of okay. So um, so it's a. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, in some in some ways this ex exploits the the torus action and the bianisky birula decomposition and also um, a few a few other um, sort of uh, classic motivic techniques. But in any case, this is this is understood. And um, what I want to um, kind of um, to do today, my point is to uh, go a bit beyond, I mean, to understand what these formulas actually mean. So I'm not gonna, um, why, why do we, why do we, uh, why do we have this Poincare polynomial? And here, you know, I wrote both the stable uh, polynomial and uh, the, just the total polynomial, and we can go in two directions, right? I mean, we can, we know that you can approach the study of the cohomology in, in, in in two in two ways. So one one thing is that you know we have the Atiabo generators, and to we we could try to understand something about the uh, the shape of the ideal of relations. Yeah. So we know that these generators become relation free as d as d is large gets large. Um, so that it's kind of a it's it's an interesting it's an interesting direction. So I can tell you right and and we expect these relations to be natural geometric. So I'll just say one thing about this direction because I'll actually focus in a, on a different one. So let's um, let's observe the following. Yeah. So so on QD now because we have the universal sequence. So on QD, so we have this universal sequence, which in this case actually I will denote by I will denote the torsion by just to the, the quotient by TE to indicate it's a torsion sheet. So this is on QD cross P1. So if we project, here we can, so we have the complexes. I'll just write something obvious in some sense. So um, I can consider the complexes, which I here, I'm going to call E sub n, which are the push forwards of the universal subsheaf twisted by um, just a just ample line bundle from P1 coming from P1. Um, so for all n, yeah, you can do, do this. And so a feature of this is that if I look at the Segre class, so you notice that if I look at, um, the, I cal I'm looking at the churn, you can look at the churn classes, but I'm actually interested in looking at the Segre class of VM. This is zero whenever K is greater than uh, D. And the reason is that this, this, well, this Segre class is actually calculates the churn class of the, associated sheaf, which comes from the torsion. So you obtain in the same way by push forward. Um, and, uh, and this is just, uh, just locally free of degree D. So then the churn class is vanished past, the, past D. I'm sorry, locally free of rank D. So the churn class, uh, the churn class is just vanished past, uh, past D. And so one thing that one can, ask is, you know, do, do these vanishings, do the segre vanishing generate the ideal relation? The, the ideal of relations. In H star of QD. Okay, when we take the, the generators to be these atia bot generators, obviously they can be expressed. These are polynomial expressions in the atia bot generators by the Riemann Roch formula. So you can say 
well, so you can ask this question. And, and then, you know, it's, it's somewhat supported by the fact that indeed there are no relations. We know that there are no relations um, in um, uh, cohomological degrees lower than D. Okay, so these, these relations are all, these would be relations uh, in, in higher cohomological degree as they should. Yeah, so we expect this. Um, so I'll, I'll leave this a bit open, okay, for the moment, because I want to, um, I, I want to say a bit more about the, the other direction, but this is, this is a, a question that sort of, it's natural and it's, um, it's kind of, um, kind of forced on us by the fact that we know what the stable, um, uh, what the stable cohomology looks like, yeah, so we understand, we, we know the stable cohomology, we want an explanation for it, so. This is something that you, you one might uh, one might pursue, and I'll defer answering this question, okay, for for the moment. But um, but this is a type of geometric re uh, relation that you 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 might expect to, to give you all relations. Essentially, this is kind of a Mumford type relation in the cohomology of uh, uh, of this cold scheme. Okay, so now, in fact. Um, yeah, let me um, go in a different direction now, um, which is, you see, which is looking at the Poincaré polynomial here. Let me highlight it, I wrote it here. Um, yeah, which is to sort of, Understand, produce not a, um, uh, not a, um, instead of studying, so to speak, the general shape of the uh, 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 of the relation ideal, uh, you, you you may attempt to produce some sort of canonical additive basis for the cohomology. Since the Poincaré polynomial looks very nice, and this can be done just by. Uh, uh, I guess a system of Hecke correspondences. So that this is what I would like to explain next. So, um, so our goal for the remainder of the lecture is to produce, so we leave this a bit open and um, here we want to produce um, an additive basis. for um, the cohomology of the code schemes, okay? So uh, this would be an Akajima type basis, okay? So let's, let's see how, what we can do. So um, it's, it's, actually, it's actually straightforward in this case and Poincaré polynomial kind of tells you what to do. Um, so we're gonna consider uh, the nested code scheme, yeah? So we can we consider for any given D, okay? So here, this sits um, so, so E tilde is a, is, a, is a locally free sheaf of degree by one less, yeah? So you study the sort of nested phenomenon. So the quotient is certainly a, a, just a, a skyscraper sheaf at a, at a point on the curve. Um, so yeah, so there's a, so what is this then? So how do you how do you constitute this? Well, you know, you you it just sits as a projective bundle over 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 Q D times P one. So in fact, um, so we have that isomorphism. Yeah, so then, um, so this, hmm, 
right? So, um, so what what you so what you need to do in order to to generate the nested the nested uh, code scheme, starting with so starting with um, um, the basic setup of E and CR, so a point in QD here, or you you fix a point where you want to have this this Hecke modification. And then you're looking at just the surjective morphisms from E to E to um, uh, just the the, the, the the skyscraper sheaf at this point. Okay, so this this is essentially this is the fiber of E dual. Okay, so and of course you look projectively inside the code scheme. So therefore, overall, one can show this easily that this is uh, I mean this is this is completely straightforward. This is just a, a projectivization of the uh, universal. Uh, sub bundle okay so then there are these natural maps so you can sorry um, you can map to qd here and well you can also forget about e and just map to the to the uh, deeper subshift so to speak so that maps you to qd plus one in here and this psi you can check is a uh, is a generically finite of degree d plus one, so it's a d plus one one map. Okay. Um, all right. So it's just a kind of a basic geometric setup uh, we have, and then on um, So this comes, of course, there are two, two basic exact sequences. One is as the, the exact sequence, the universal sequence. So this would be, well, there's a torsion and this is precisely, I'll explain in a second. Or oh, maybe I, I oh, don't know, it's actually okay. Okay. Okay, so now this, I'll explain immediately what this is. I mean, here, of course, this maps to QD cross P1 and this diagonal, you see there's a divisor here, which is just a pullback of the diagonal on P1 times P1. So this figures here. It's, so this parameterizes the, the elementary uh, modification at the point, yeah. And then there's this L, which is just a hyperplane of the, of the um, so this is a line bundle which is the hyperplane bundle of this projective, projective bundle, okay? So this is a un fundamental universal sequence which connects the two sides on QDD plus one. And so then of course, B is just the exact sequence of this projective bundle. So how, so this is on, so there's a quotient Q So this is just on QDD plus one, okay? And this is pulled back from QD via this, um, yeah, so this is pulled back from the base from here. From, uh, yeah, it's pulled back from here. Huh? Okay. Um, so this is just the exact sequence of the projective bond. This is the universal. Bundle. Okay, so then, so this analysis, you know, it's it's easier. I mean, okay, this is this, this setup has been much studied. For example, in the in the context of um, just the Hilbert scheme of uh, points on a on a surface, you know. So, um, in fact, uh, in fact, by Lothar. Um, so it's nothing, nothing very surprising. You know? I mean, it's, uh, it's kind of a standard way to move between um, inductively between uh, understanding the cohomology of QD, understanding the cohomology of QD plus one. Um, so um, also, so therefore, you know, but these exact sequences allow us to relate easily the churn classes, which is something that we want to do. So let me just. Um, yeah, so here I have to be, 
Um, right, so I will call the uh, hyperplane and this P1, I'll call this H0, okay? So, so then, Whereas, so we have two P1s, yeah, I mean, on this, so we have to be a bit so, and, and on the basic, ah, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's, I'm saying it exactly the way I don't want it, okay, I apologize, so, no, I'm going to call this H, okay, and when I write the universal sequence in the context when this would be uh, H0, this H0 will disappear, so this is what zero yeah so we have two p1s they each each has a in the picture here we each has a hyperplane so we have to keep them apart this h in the basic one that comes into the projective bundle and uh, zero so then um if we uh so from the uni so the universal exact sequence gives gives the following. Well, if you, if we write the, um, the churn classes, we, we sort of, we do this Kuna decomposition. So we can, now we have two sets of classes for E and for this E tilde. Okay, so then you just, uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to go into the details of the calculation because it's completely standard, but um, gives, so setting these, so with this notation, okay, um, we have um, okay. we have that and now I'm just gonna write the full series, so to speak. So this is is absolutely standard calculations. Okay, so you might not even. Um, it is kind of important, but. Uh, as one, right, so it's something that you definitely want to understand. We also have that, um, so these are both classes, so this is on QD D plus one, yeah? So we're looking, so we decomposed, we use the universal sequence to, um, uh, and the, the QNET decomposition on this, uh, on the second P1, so to speak, in the problem. And this is what, uh, what we have. So here, just to, um, right, so so I, I should also say that for the, I'm interested in the churn class of the quotient on the projective bundle. And this is in fact, well, again, this is immediate. I'll remind you in a second of the classes if this is a bit confusing. So in any case, we have, and this is something that is useful, and it's a beautiful formula, in fact, um, that when everything is said and done, the two uh, universal classes differ by just the churn class of the, of the quotient bundle here, okay? And again, I don't write it by, I mean, this is a multi-degree formula, but... Uh, Okay. Okay. So, but let me also quickly remind you how, what this class is. Oh, okay. So I didn't say that this, okay. So this Lambda is actually this hyperplane class. Yeah. So it's C1 of L. Okay. So in other words, if we, if we think of this being just a, so this has a structure of a projective bundle over QD, right? As we, so let me remind quickly here what the classes are. So this H is the hyperplane on P1. Lambda is, well, there's a, there's a hyperplane 
line, line bundle here. So this lambda is C1 of L. And in fact, the entire cohomology of this nested Hilbert scheme then is written over the cohomology of QD, where you have these two generators. You have H and you have lambda. Um, and then, you know, of course, the relations are that where H squared is zero. And also there's a basic relation on, on just on, any, on the projective bundle. And this is that the top churn class of E dual L is equal to zero. Now it's just a standard relation on, on any projective bundle. So that's why it's no, it's no mystery that this A tilde and F tilde then can be written in terms of precisely these classes, yeah, up here, A, F, which, which generate, which live here, they generate the cohomology of uh, QD. And then, you know, you have these extra two classes, H and Lambda to contend with. One coming from P1, the other one is just a hyperplane class. Okay. So any, any questions uh, so far? Yeah, so then, so then we're in a position to define these um, Heke Nakajima type operators in, uh, um, right? So we have this, um, so our setup allows us to define, um, the collection of two R operators. So, right. So we let's let's remind ourselves of the basic notation here. This maps to Q D by phi and to U D plus one by psi. And while psi is a, is a um, um, finite map is a generically finite map this phi is, is not it's uh it has um the fiber has dimension r yeah because this sits as a projective bundle over qd cross p1 here okay so it factors like this okay so um so let's so we have these operators they will be indexed by Um, yeah, by uh, we have two indices here. So what? So this. So this goes from the cohomology of QD to the cohomology of QD plus one. Um, and let's say you take a class alpha. Or you pull it back uh, to the to the nested uh, quote scheme, and then you intersect with uh, this uh, canonical class, which is the class of this, with the churn classes of the of the um, uh, uh, canonical quotient of the, of the of the projective bundle. And then also with this uh, hyperplane class on P1. So here I ranges from zero to R minus one. This Q is a vector bundle of rank R minus one. And of course, A is either zero or one. No. Um, Yeah, so, um, right, so if you, if we're looking at what this does, so basically, for example, A00 is just the nested Hilbert scheme itself, yeah, you don't, um, and, and for, to generate the rest of the operators, you, 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 you uh, don't use just this, the, 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 the correspondence, which is the, which is the obvious one, the incidence correspondence, this nested uh, quote scheme, but you you also use these natural cycles on it, yeah, which are these classes uh, um, 
uh, I, I found it more convenient to work with the churn classes of Q as opposed to powers of, um, of the hyperplane class. But essentially, it's the same thing. You know? I mean, so you can say, well, like I could use a lambda to the i here, but I think this is better to see certain, uh, to calculate with it, in fact. Um, yeah, so this operator then, how does, what does it do to us? So to, if to a cycle of a certain dimension, well, it raises by, oh, I'm sorry, minus. I'm sorry, you can, you can see this, this is obvious. You can just, okay. So essentially they raise dimension, no? In, in the case when, um, well, when the maximal case, when I look at i is equal to r minus one and h, then it, it's actually, it, it preserves dimension, but in general, it will raise dimension. But I'm also of course interested in looking at the transpose operator, the one that goes from, um, so if I look at the transpose operator, so given by the same cycle, but I view this as going from QD plus one to QD. Okay, then this, the dimension goes down in this way. Okay, so this lowers dimension. Okay, so one raises the other one, lowers dimension. Um, okay, so so then, um, well, so the there are a couple of basic propositions here. The first one is that these operators commute. Yeah, so. Of course, to see this, you look into, um, so you, you have to compose, no? You have to compose the operators and they're, they're raising, they're both raising. So you, um, so you, I'm not gonna show the argument, but I will just, uh, <coughs> you have to look into, I'm sorry. You, you have to look at the double nested. Um, um, quote scheme. And then of course there's a projection to um, to the to the nested quote scheme where the where the length of the quotient is actually uh, one, one, one scheme sits in the other with, with the quotient of length two. Okay. So this is so this here you look at uh, tilde. I'm using f for the one that will disappear that you project out of. Yeah. So then this. So this is where this is where the cycle, the correspondence, the cycle will be supported. That the composition of these two operators will be supported on this quote scheme, and then you know you just like this. And if I'm just looking at this inclusion then the torsion here has length two. I'm sorry, the quotient has length two. It's a torsion sheaf of length two. So then, you know, you just use the basic geometric setup. This is generically a two to one map. So you can, um, um, yeah, so you can, you can, um, you can argue the, the commutation, okay? But um, so, so basically looking at the Poincaré polynomial, you would like to say, well, you know, you just act with these operators on the, on the, on the vacuum on Q zero. So on, there's a, there's a, there's a and, and, and then they just, just sort of freely generate the, the, the cohomology of, uh, of, of, the, of these um, torsion quote schemes. And that is indeed the case. So, but you do have to, um, you're interested also in establishing the commutations with the, uh, with the transposed operators, right? The lowering operator, so to speak. So, um, so we also wish to calculate. Right, 
right? This type of commutator. Um, so, um, yeah, so then again, you know, a, a calculation is needed here. So um, you, so, um, so I'll just say a few words in the remaining time about what this is and how, um, so maybe I should kind of be a bit organized here and say that, let's say that you want to look at this composition, of course, as a correspondence. Um, so this is a cycle supported on, on the following scheme. So this is, I'm gonna call this Z minus So this proceeds not, you know, not unlike the uh, the calculation of the Nakajima uh, um, uh, commutation relations for the Heisenberg algebra on the Hilbert scheme. No, I mean it's, it's this type of uh, it's 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 kind of this type of analysis. So this z minus is just um, you're looking at well, so um, so three subsheaves here, yeah. So and the main point is that. They're contained in the same, I call this F, I'll explain in a second. Okay, so it's a cycle supported like this. So you have three subsheaves of CR, but in this relation, so two of them are, are actually contained in, um, in, uh, in this F minus. And of course the, um, uh, they're contained with, with quotient, uh, which is a skyscraper sheaf, no? So, um, so then of course, then you want to project this, yeah? So you take, so you, so then you, you take the, well, well, sorry. Um, so in fact, you're, um, yeah, how do I, yeah, so let me maybe, right, right, right. Let me see how I organize this best in, there's very little time left or so. Um, yeah, so let me say also about the other one, right? So if I'm looking at a, a, B plus composed with A, I, A. This is a cycle supported on, let me call this Z plus. And this Z plus is the um, way it goes. So again, you, you have three uh, subsheaves and the ones you care, so you have E at this E and E tilde. This I think in, in this code scheme, this is E, e tilde and this is F plus, yeah. And um, they're in this relation. So this E and E tilde uh, are, are related by the fact that they, they actually contain a, a, a large subsheaf, this F plus, they both contain it. Yeah, so, so then, um, this correspondence is both the so Z minus and Z plus. Um, both have dimension. Well, the dimension of the quote scheme, QD plus R. Um, now, they play differently, which is why the commutator in general will not be will not be zero. Yeah. So. Um, so in fact, the Z minus is smooth irreducible. So in fact, you can say what it is. I mean, this is, so it's, it's, it's simpler to describe in some sense. So this is over QD minus one is a product of two projective bundles. Mm.
So, so here, you know, you, you have two, you have a universal E1 on the first copy of P1 and E2. Yeah, so, so this is, this is simpler, but, um, uh, but this is not the case about Z plus. The Z plus is not irreducible. So Z plus is not irreducible. And in fact, it has one component, which is smooth, one component. Well, if you look at this, is I can look at a component when E and E tilde are the same is it's given by E in CR being equal as a point in the quote scheme to E tilde in CR. And then of course you have a, you, you pick a sub, a, a, a sub sheaf. Okay, so this is one component of it. And in fact, so this, this component, let's call it C, it's kind of a distinguished component, plays a major role here. So C is just um, isomorphic to a pro the projective bundle over E plus P. So you see it has the right dimension. It's a big, it's a big locus, in fact, in this in this Z plus. But in any case, so what you what you want to do is ultimately project to, so you have this, let me, uh -huh, okay, it's, it's, it's okay, I won't um, discuss too much. So let me just, because let me write this to, to compare in. So of course you want to project to QD cross QD where you want to compare these two compositions no? so here. So let me write them side by side. So this is Z plus here. Um, and again, you, you want to project to QD cross QD. So, so, so our operators are cycles supported. So what these compositions are cycles supported on Z minus and Z plus respectively which you then um, um, project down to QD times QD and you hope uh, then you calculate, you calculate the difference, no? So, but largely these calculations will overlap. So they, these, so, um, so basically, yeah, let's think a little bit about this, this setup. I'll just explain because geometrically it's very simple what goes on. So if I'm, if I'm on this side where in fact I'm looking at uh, subsheaves which have a common, I'm looking at pairs E and E tilde, which have a common, uh, uh, okay, which are, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just a second, I want to do this right. Um, which are both contained in um, a common subsheaf F minus with some quotients. So unless you see, unless um, unless these maps are the same, so this quotient, unless p is equal to q, and in fact these two maps are exactly the same, this phi and phi tilde. In other words, if e and e tilde coincide as subsheaves, unless that happens, there's a pullback here, which maps you to the other side. No, so which is basically will give you a point in the correspondence Z plus. And, and conversely here, if I start with a subsheaf of both, um, unless again, E and E tilde are identical, there is a push out, no, which they will, they will be subsheaves of uh, of a common subsheaf F minus of the correct degree, degree by by uh, by one uh, higher by one. Okay. Um, so and so so this is a so basically this establishes that so there is a um, there's an isomorphism between an open. Um, subscheme of Z minus and then open subscheme of Z plus, okay? So that, 
under which, under this isomorphism, I don't have time to explain this, I'm just kind of give, giving a flavor of this, uh, um, uh, of this um, calculation. Um, the classes, the cycles that are supported precisely match on both sides, okay? Um, so then you have, to, you have to see where you don't have, where you don't have this picture, where you don't have this isomorphism. And that is exactly over the diagonal in QD times QD. So you have you always this diagram work, works perfectly unlike, unless the two pairs, E and E tilde, are actually the same. Um, so then, um, yeah, so let me write this as a lemma. Um, so there is an isomorphism. So as I said, this is not at all unlike the calculation of the Nakajima commutators on the Hilbert scheme, where this type of analysis is also, is also done, okay? Which basically interchanges, which matches the cycle supported on, the, on these two subschemes on Z minus and Z plus, okay? So, so then you, you have to deal with, the, with the, what's left essentially. And on one side, so you have to examine and this plays differently on the two sides. Uh, somehow, which is why you, you get a non-trivial commutator sometimes, which I'll tell you what it is. Uh, okay. Uh, Z minus zero. Okay. And so, yeah, so in here, there's a, there's a big, there's this, this is actually this component C that I described, which sits as a, um, so this is just a, um, so in, okay, so this C sitting inside QD cross QD plus one cross QD is in fact isomorphic to, this is just a, uh, let me write it here. Maybe I write it here. So this is just a projectivization of the universal bundle on the, um, over the diagonal. Yeah, so over the diagonal in QD times QD cross P1. Okay, that's how, that's how you should view it. So, um, so then, so then this leads to the following conclusion in some sense. So we have the following proposition, which sort of sums up if one does the calculation in detail. So it's, the point is that this commutator viewed as a correspondence in QD times QD in the cohomology of QD times QD is always supported on the diagram. And so, so in particular, concretely we have, well, A, I mean, maybe I should say one here, that this commutator is zero whenever I plus J plus A plus B is less than R, just for dimension reasons, it cannot be supported on the diagonal, it is for dimension reasons. And two, if you have a match, um, then the commutator is the identity
for complementary pairs of operators. So whenever I plus J is equal to R minus one and A plus B is equal to one, okay? Um, and so it's zero otherwise. Now it does appear that this algebra does not close in the sense that, so you'd say, well, you know, this would be, what happens if, if you exceed this number? So, so more precisely, if, I plus, well, let me put it like this. It's okay, so. Um, it seems that the commutator is calculated by a cycle which can, determine, can be determined precisely by a tautological cycle on the, on the diagonal, okay? But in any case, with this, um, um, so the, the, the conclusion in, I'm sorry, I went over, I just, I'll be done in a couple of minutes, but it's kind of hard to interrupt at this uh, particular moment. So yeah, so what this means though, is that let's write this as a, maybe as a theorem is that um, the cohomology of the quote schemes in this case has a canonical basis. Okay, given by applying these operators. The operators IA to, to a basic state zero, say to the zero where, where this just spans is just the cohomology of Q zero. Yeah, Q zero is just a point. Um, yeah, so then, you know, you write everything basically, you know, as a, um, and, and so, okay, you can always, once you know they're com they, com um, um, they commute, you can just propagate a vacuum through them, but this commutation, the fact that you can go back shows you that in fact, um, um, it's the, the, the um, uh, shows you that in fact the classes you you generate in this manner are linearly independent okay and then the Poincare polynomial does the rest the Poincare polynomial basically strongly suggests this picture and so so then in fact they you know they they span the cohomology as well just because the Poincare polynomial tells you so but this computing the the commutator with the with the, the with the lowering operator with the transpose is important for understanding that uh, they're actually linearly independent. So you generate linearly independent classes. Yeah, so you, so you have this picture and um, yeah, so, you know, so basically you can say, well, you have a, this, then these basis vectors are, are labeled by a, um, by a multiplet and I A, you know, which corresponds to applying each operator a suitable number of times, you know, so. and zero, one, and so on. AR minus one, zero. Yeah. Also, these are the basis vectors. And these are sort of canonical. There are no choices involved in, in, come, in producing these bases. Um, So it's, it's kind of an Akajima basis. So um, yeah, so I should say also as a remark that it does not matter at all for this, uh, that um, uh, C is P1, can take C an arbitrary smooth projective curve. And also it does not matter at all that you start with a trivial sheaf. It could be, it could be anything. So, um, so it could be quotients of, uh, a fixed sheaf E zero, but of course torsion quotients, yeah, so rank zero quotients. 
on some arbitrary curve. See, not, nothing changes in the analysis that, of course, on a curve, you have odd cohomology. So this zero and one that I have here, um, uh, this, this second index, of course, um, um, is, is there to model the cohomology of P1, yeah? So you have the class of a point and the fundamental class. For an arbitrary curve, you have to include the odd generators, yeah? So then, so then, so then you have a larger family of operators, but in some sense, you know, the analysis is not, uh, is not uh, more difficult. And of course, let me st maybe stop sharing. Uh, ah, here. Uh, yeah, so, um, so the analysis, basically, um, I would say, I should say that I, I knew about this, uh, you know, of course I knew about this Poincare polynomial, but these operators for a long time, but giving this lecture is an opportunity for me to, to sort of um, understand how to, you know, present this best and uh, yeah, so and somehow calculate carefully. Um, and um, you could say, well, what, what does this have to do with anything? So I just wanted to, because we started with these Lefschetz SL2s and of course the, the idea is that, um, um, you know, how do you calculate when, you, you know, we wrote, we wrote this in the Chow of an abelian variety and, you know, if say you want to express this on the quote scheme, then, then, then having such a basis might help. So you can, in either, either of the two approaches I outlined, one is to, you know, I will produce this canonical basis. So then it might be easy to write the left shift SL2 in terms of these operators and, and, uh, the other approach too, if you if you if you have a good system of generators, when you control a bit the ideal of relations, you understand you you understand the ideal of relations. You might also be able to just define the um, uh, the operators on the on the generators, so on just and then see that they're compatible with the relations if if, if the relations are geometric. So basically, it's it's kind of a sets 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 the stage for for this type of. A, any calculation on the cohomology, for example, of the, the left shift SL2s, but other, you know, other calculations too. So it's kind of, it's good to have in some sense, this type of uh, description. So, yeah, I apologize. I, you know, I don't know how I always run over. So I run over uh, a lot of time. So if, I don't know if there are any questions or. Thank you very much. I'm actually going to prove the statements you gave us today because I've never seen them before, so I was a bit lost. Sorry? I'm going to prove the, the things you discussed today in the end, like the proposition or the theorem. Uh, am I going to prove the... Uh, like the last parts, like when you give the description or of Z minus Z plus. To the, the commutators in, I, I try to sketch the, how you approach the, it's a calculation, right? So it's actually kind of, yeah. So I, I, I try to sketch a bit how you calculate this commutator. Basically there's a large overlapping part in the two sides when you, in the two, in the two compositions, and then you have to somehow um, come to terms with the difference. And so, um, yeah, this is, I guess, you know, as I said, I, I'm, I'm sort of working them, I worked them out. Uh, I mean, I knew for a long time they were there, but uh, I try, worked them out basically for the purpose of this, uh, of this, of this lecture. And um, to, then, yeah, so there isn't, they should be written carefully, but in some sense, I, I, did, I did indicate a little bit how, you know, how, how you go about it. But I mean, you mean, you mean to have this in all in, in, full, in full detail and, uh, just the calculation of the commutators. Yeah, yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe I, I have to go through the details. Because... No, no, I mean, it's, uh, for example, I didn't, ex you know, the, for example, the, the fact that they commute, I, uh, you know, I, yes, there are arguments to be completely, uh, to, to be written, care you know, to be given carefully. And of course I could not in, in one hour, uh, uh, do it, you know, but but uh, yeah, the it, it's just an in, it's intersection theoretic calculations, no, in uh, uh, in successive nested quote schemes that 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 give you give you these commutators, you know. Uh, 
So, but of course, maybe there is an optimal way to, which still maybe I, I haven't, uh, you know, to, to present this, because as I said, if you look at, it's not a, so maybe you would hope for a, for a kind of a finite Heisenberg algebra. And this doesn't seem to be that because you, you do have this, some of the commutators will not, um, yeah, I mean, you, 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 you will, will be properly supported on the diagonal for dimension reasons. So, we'll, you know, so you'll have some cycle on the diagonal, but I, so I'll, I'll have to think a little bit about that. So the algebra doesn't seem to close completely, you see, but it's enough what already the propositions that I wrote, I mean, the fact that they commute and the fact that um, in there is, so to speak, a, um, for each creation operator is a matching annihilation operator that so that the commuter is the identity is enough to, to provide this basis. So this basis is, uh, is given. It's enough to show that these are inject, uh, this is, uh, they're linearly independent. You know, this, if, you, if, you, if you keep applying the creation operator to the vacuum, you generate linearly independent vector. So what, what I, um, you know what, I, the, the propositions I, uh, the commutators I actually calculate are enough for this purpose. But yes, for an optimal presentation of the algebra, I agree there's still, one has to, one has to work maybe a bit more. So, but thanks for the question, yeah. Actually, I have one comment to say, but, but just to, uh, which is that, um, this doesn't, you know, this picture, which is, is fairly simple now, it doesn't, um, doesn't, doesn't work for, unless um, for, for um, the case of a non-degenerate Grassmannian. So when R is less than N, so you look at a quote scheme in that case, uh, it's more subtle. I mean, you know, the Poincaré polynomial looks also beautiful, but these Hecke-type correspondences uh, do not tell the whole story in that case. Okay, so one has to one has to work harder. Just as I would say, it's you know in the moduli theory of sheaves on surfaces, it's the same the same situation for rank one for the Hilbert scheme. The Hecke correspondences capture capture the cohomology, but it's not the case for higher rank sheaves. Yeah, so for so. It's kind of an interesting one, yeah. So we've been an interesting thing to study, basically, the case when R is less than N. So here I only focused on the case of torsion quotients. But uh, yeah, anyway, so just, uh, yeah, so I, yeah, I apologize. <laughs> I ran over time and yeah, it's a... Uh, is there any uh, general theory about this point is uh, heck, uh, heck one the equation as an algebra? Uh, here, the, the core scheme is for uh, sheets on uh, T1. Uh, for, for general algebra, uh, it's good for uh, this uh, hyperbolic point. You know, I'm sorry, I have to say that some of the acoustic, there is something about, I can't hear, I, I, I heard a little bit, but not quite completely. Uh, uh, I, I mean, uh, here, here, the algebra structure is for cold scheme uh, of shifts over P1. Uh, is, is that uh, a similar structure for other cold scheme like uh, shifts on uh, hygienous algebra, uh, hygienous curves? Oh, yeah, you know, the, so for uh, this particular call scheme, I ended up discussing of torsion uh, to, when the, the quotients are torsion. This is smooth for any, uh, for any curve, but, but in general, the code scheme um, on a curve is can be quite, quite singular. So then, you know, you have to, right, so, so you, and the structure is, is much uh, is much messier, so you can, yeah. So you 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 have to sort of work virtually, but then you know how. Yeah, so it's a, it's 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 a more difficult picture to make sense of. I'm not saying it's impossible, but but in principle, lots of things do not go as you as you. It's it's not smooth. It's a, it's a, it can be quite badly behaved. You know, for a higher, uh, 
for, for a higher genus curve. But, um, and an arbitrary grass mine, you know, I mean, if in this case, in this degen kind of, why well, I won't say degenerate, but kind of limit case, when you're looking at torsion quotients, it's okay. So that this goes through, as I remarked, this, this is basically, it's the same picture, but, uh, but in general, no. So another thing that you could, one could look at is the quote scheme of um, zero dimensional quotients on a surface. Yeah, so sort of generalizing the Hilbert scheme. Mm -hmm. So you look at quotients, not of C, but of some higher rank trivial sheaf on the, on a surface. So that, that's also not smooth. So, but it's, I don't know. It's, oh. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, thank you.